Welcome to an episode of About to Drop, a podcast where I interview indie artists about new music they're about to release. I'm your host, Baro Avad, aka Vertigo. I'm a pop producer that works with indie artists and songwriters to create, record, and release new music. I've found that I have a lot of similar conversations with newer indie artists I work with, and I thought it'd be useful for us to hear about other artists' processes, struggles, stories, and best practices. Hopefully you find something useful for your own career, and at the very least, find a new artist whose music you can check out. If you'd like to be featured on an upcoming episode, please go to www.vrtigomusic.com forward slash podcast. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of About to Drop. I'm here with Taya Marquise. Yes. How's Hi. it going? Good, how are you? Good, good. It's been a year. Uh, yeah, it's like a year, year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half, my gosh. Because I remember the last time you came over to our place, we were getting ready to go to India. Yes, I remember. And I think we were leaving like the next morning. Yes, oh my goodness. And then, and then I think you proposed? Yep, on that, that, that was a trip I proposed to, yes. to my now wife, and we got married a few months ago, yeah. Cute, very cute. Yeah, so good to be here. Mm-hmm. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, I took, I passed through three states to get here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Came from New York State to New Jersey State, and now I'm in Pennsylvania mm-hmm. State. You guys are wondering, like, wait, are we in New York still? Are we in New Jersey? <laughs> like, where are we? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, um, so what's new? You guys are in, in the States for a couple of days, right? Yes. We're, um, my team and I are in, uh, in New York for five days. We came, um, now it's, we're, we have two more days here, um, and we've had a hell of a great trip. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been really, really productive. We have done a few press interviews, and this one is mm-hmm. one which I'm really happy about. Um, we did a show, my first show in New York nice. ever. So I'm really, I was really happy about that. It was a great turnout. Um, it was for a launch of a magazine called Hang Time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now we have a studio session, well today with you, and mm-hmm. then tomorrow as well with another artist. So awesome. pretty show packed. There. Um, it was really good. It was really, really good. I love New York because the audience is very real. Like, I feel like in Toronto, um, oh yeah, I'm from Toronto, Canada, by the way. Um, and I feel like in Toronto, the audience is very nice. Like, it's nice to have a nice audience, Mm -hmm. um, but it's also not really good for your growth. If people are too nice about your, like, if you suck, and you sing, people, you'll still get a good feedback and a good, you'll still get (laughs) applause. It it doesn't, yeah, it's not helpful helpful for growth. And I feel like New York, you guys are really just like truthful about Mm -hmm. whether you like the performance or not. And um, I heard that a lot from, uh, from the audience. Like I heard that a lot from just being in New York and Mm -hmm. from the New Yorkers. And when I did my show, I got so many people coming up to me after, like, what's your, where can I find your music? And like, you're, you're dope, you're dope. And I was really happy about that because um, I knew they were genuine about mm-hmm. it. I knew they genuinely resonated with my songs and my music. Awesome. Yeah, New York will tell you. Yeah. You'll feel the crowd. <laughs> Which I'm happy about because I'm ready for growth. Like if I, mm-hmm. you know, I wanna, I wanna always be growing, so. That was really good. I got really good feedback from my show, so I'm really happy about awesome. that. Where, where was it? Um, it was in um, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. It was in Brooklyn. Um, it was called... Cook Studios. Oh, yeah. It was called Cook Studios. <laughs> <laughs> Cook Studios in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was really, really cool. I'm addicted. I want to just do more and more shows in the States now. Mm-hmm. Cause I love you guys. Like I love the feedback. Well, I see on Instagram you're like playing out pretty often in, in Toronto, aren't you? 
Yep, yep. I have been, this summer has been all about shows um, mm -hmm. in Toronto. Uh, lots of, lots of bookings, which is really good. Um, and yeah, I, I'm ready. I feel really ready to start traveling mm -hmm. and doing shows outside of Toronto now. That's awesome. Yeah. How long have you been playing, playing out and doing yeah. live shows? Um, I have been, for this EP specifically. Well, I mean, just like in general. In general? Oh, in general, I've been performing since my last EP. I The last EP I put out was Woman EP, and that was about um, two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, I did a lot of shows promoting that EP, and one of the shows I opened up for Tinashe when she came to oh, wow. yeah when nice. she came to Toronto for her Aquarius tour um, and yeah that was that was really dope I, I did a lot of shows mm -hmm. um, for that EP and then now I'm doing a lot of shows for this EP and trying the last EP I never took it outside of Toronto it was it was all Toronto based mm -hmm. all the shows but this EP I really really want to focus on taking it out of Toronto. If, Okay. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, well, that's cool. Let's, let's go back in time a little bit then. So when uh, when did you start uh, singing and performing and how did this all, you know, get started? Oh, yeah. So I I started singing first um, because I was exposed to um, singers on the, on the TV and the television. Like, just like normal, like every, all of us as kids, we, we see, you know, Britney Spears. I was, I was like, Ooh, she's so dope. When I was like seven, mm -hmm. I was like, I fell in love with Britney Spears and, uh, Christina Aguilera and, uh, Spice Girls and Mara Carey and Whitney Houston, all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really wanted to be a singer and I, begged my parents to put me into vocal lessons at age seven and I really started developing my voice from then mm -hmm. on but then when I was 14 I um, traveled to LA for a vacation and met a producer who introduced me to the songwriting world mm -hmm. and I didn't even know that existed I didn't even know that was a job mm -hmm. and so um, I met a producer and I started writing with this producer um, remotely so I was I was going back and forth from Toronto to LA, traveling and writing. And then I finally um, wanted to have a voice of my own as an artist um, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I started writing songs. What, what made the switch? Like, what made you want to write your own music? I really just wanted to stand for like my own message mm -hmm. I I was writing songs for artists I, I wrote for Kesha one of um, the things I did in LA and uh, the song was called A La Discotheque mm -hmm. and I don't know I just love I fell in love with brand like the the branding side of artists like mm -hmm. every artist is a brand and I'm like I want to be a brand too mm -hmm. like I feel like I have something to say. I have a message. I have a purpose, mm -hmm. and I want that brand to come out too and be resonating with people too. So mm -hmm. that's what kind of made me um, not just be behind the scenes, but want to be in front mm -hmm. too. And that's yeah. a good way to look at it. Yeah, each artist is their own brand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. But like, I think a lot of like, especially newer artists, don't don't see that that part of it. You know? Yeah, I know like everything has to be aligned. Yeah. To like match up with your brand. Exactly. I think that when you think of it that way and, and you think of yourself as a brand, then um, everything is streamlined through that those mm -hmm. that vision. And um, I mean, there's like the world is running on brands. Like mm -hmm. there's brands everywhere around mm -hmm. us. So um, you can't, I don't know, we can't argue with the fact that um, that an artist, like even in the music life, it's a brand. Like mm -hmm. brands are, exist not in just like Procter and Gamble, like, right. um, and your the toothpaste that you use is a brand. Like it's, it's it converts into every um, industry. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the entertainment industry, there's it's all branding too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So how would you describe your sound? Um, I would say R. It would sit in the world of R and B 
pop and hip hop. Mm -hmm. um, hip hop, not as in like I'm a rapper, <laughs> but uh, I ha I love hip hop um, influences. So I brought, I I wanted to work with a, the producer that I worked with is um, Neo Tempest. Shout out to Neo Tempest. Um, he is a really good producer on all counts, but he is he started off in hip hop, so he has that. He brings that hip hop influence, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, with the R and B influence, um, and then the pop. So it's th there's a lot of guitars in my music, mm -hmm. um, electronic guitars and acoustic guitars. Um, most of them are like have like a bop to it. Mm -hmm. Most of the, my songs on the EP have a bop to it, um, and I love uh, deep deeper concepts, mm -hmm. lyrical concepts. Um, I like talking about like real shit. <laughs> um, That's good. Yeah, I like talking about real shit, but like I like putting it on a fun beat mm -hmm. so it's easier to digest. Right, it's not so heavy. Yeah, <laughs> it's not so heavy. Um, and, uh, and I love melodies, so I would say my music is very melodic. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I've heard so far is, is dope, I was talking earlier. Oh, you thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you. I'm so happy everyone loves it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I, as much as I do. Can you tell me a little bit about how the EP came about? Like, how, how did this one, this one start? Um, this one started with me writing a shit ton of songs, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, I just wanted to spill out all my um, ideas and just stack up, stack up, stack up. And mm -hmm. so I had... Um, about 22 songs um, where I stopped, not stopped writing, but I just stopped and to analyze. I'm like, I really want to start thinking about an EP now. Mm -hmm. And I started like, um, I started just analyzing each song and, and putting them into categories of what, mm -hmm. what they're talking about, what lyrical concept they're talking about and this and that. And then somehow I formulated, well, not somehow, it was a really big, long process, but um, I formulated the I'm Perfect EP mm -hmm. uh, by just those songs fit together. Mm -hmm. That's how I analyzed all the 22 songs and then those six songs mm -hmm. fit, fit well together. That's interesting. So what were some of like, the different categories that they fell under? Um, there was the dancey uh, electronic Mm -hmm. style music because I started I have some uh, some of those in the catalog um, there's the fun um, there's like the fun category there's like the romantic mm -hmm. uh, category there's the there was the um, deep like R&B mm -hmm. vibe category and then this EP I feel like it really all of the songs the concepts of it, like the lyrical concept, they all talk about um, the imperfections of me and like just humans. Mm -hmm. um, but is that like a common thread that kind of runs through all of them? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's like um, the imperfections of human beings and myself mm -hmm. and what I wrote about. Um, but I. Um, I'm growing, mm -hmm. so that's why I called it I'm perfect because I believe imperfections are perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so I I called it, it's spelled imperfect, but I call it I'm perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really cool. It's a cool concept. Thank you. How, but I'm looking forward to the putting out the other songs that are not, that are still on the catalog. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so what were some challenges you ran into while putting this together? Oh, wow. Challenges? Um, I honestly didn't know the categories. Like, I couldn't, because when they, they're songs that came out of me. So to me, they're, the way I see my songs sometimes is not how other people receive it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I just... To me, like they were, they could all fit on an EP. Like to me, yeah. I'm like, they're all songs. They're great songs. Like I love them all. Mm -hmm. So for me, I couldn't like differentiate it them all. So what I did, which was really like administrative, um, 
and the administrative side came out of me, I guess. But um, I did a, I created a survey, like an online survey, and I sent out my music on all the 22 songs, um, the catalog. I put it on a link, plus a sur- and I attached a survey, and I sent it out to my industry friends. Um, a ton of, in- like a few really good, valuable industry, industry friends, and they all like gave me their feedback and did this, they performed the survey. And then I analyzed all the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the results of the survey and then obviously made my own decision, but that really helped me. Mm. Really helped I remember me. getting that, I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> you got it too, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's smart though. It's like getting like crowd feedback on like your own stuff before. Exactly, before the exactly. Smart. Yeah, you know, um, us artists, we're all businesses. Mm-hmm. Like we're not just people, but like we are, Beyonce is a business. Mm-hmm. She's not just a person anymore. So if Apple, Apple is super successful um, because they are user, they listen to their um, customers mm-hmm. and they're constantly improving based on feed, the feedback that they get from their customers. Mm-hmm. So they're always like um, adhering and um, they're always uh, making sure their products are in line with what their customers need, mm-hmm. and, which is very smart. And they're like the biggest business out there right now, yeah. Apple. Um, so I kind of took that, I guess. I'm like, smart. maybe I can do that. Maybe I can be an Apple too, mm-hmm. but in an artist's <laughs> life, like in an artist way. Right. So, yeah, no, it, it was helpful. It mm-hmm. was really helpful, the, the feedback. That's really cool. So what is, um, so making music is part of the equation, right? Like that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. Uh, but what comes next? How are you guys planning to like promote it, market it? You know, what's the uh, the plan after it's released? Oh my goodness. You don't, you don't get too in Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. Like, is there like a general game plan? Of course, yes. My team and I have been working very disgustingly hard <laughs> um, uh, at this plan, the, the release strategy. Um, the music is out there. It's already released on all streaming platforms. Um, but we, I'm really excited about the, um, the content that is surrounding the EP. That we're that we're about to release. So um, specifically, get going is the single that we're working right now, and we're putting out that one gets a video, a music video. So as soon as I get back to Toronto, I have my music video shoot date, mm-hmm. um, and then we are shooting a video for Strive and shooting a video for Chosen, mm-hmm. um, and then the get going has a Spanish remix that's mm-hmm. also coming out Adelante. Um, so, and then we're going on tour. <laughs> so lots, lots of stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, and and um, there's other things in the works, um, which you guys will will see. Um, but it's a whole release strategy um, with uh, our PR person, um, our our publicist. Sorry, our um, digital marketing. Mm-hmm. All of that. That there's a whole marketing department cool. that um, that I put together with my team. So, mm-hmm. and is this the first time you've had like a, a release strategy surrounding an EP, or did you do the same thing on the last one? Yes. Good question. Because yeah, no, I didn't mm-hmm. do it on the last <laughs> one. I didn't do it on the last one, and that is something that I really learned mm-hmm. this time around. And I'm um, again imperfect. It's okay. Like. Yeah. It's okay. We're growing. It's just staying on brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. So this time around, I am I never regret anything because everything is a lesson. Everything is growth. It's, mm-hmm. It adds to your growth. Um, but this time around, I'm really, really happy that uh, I put together a release strategy with mm-hmm. my team. The, the For the woman EP, I was just kind of just really just going with like vibe and the fl- going with the flow. Mm-hmm. Um, this time around, uh, it's very strategic. I w- I've been part of this, the strategies, the strategy development, um, the marketing, um, the, um, like the, the whole release strategy. Mm-hmm. I've been part of it. So no, to answer your question, um, 
I haven't done this before, but yeah. it's definitely a good thing. I would advise all artists to, because we put so much work in, and energy yeah. into this and to our songs and to our music, and not just energy, but like if you're doing it right, then you're paying for your shit too, mm -hmm. and you're putting in money and, and investment. You're investing mm -hmm. your time, energy, and money. So why would you just like drop it on SoundCloud? Like why would you just waste all that those months that you you know that mm -hmm. you've um, invested in, and then just yeah, and, then and just like just week. yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. no one like no one has heard it because you've not properly put it in front of people's eyes. And let's be real, like the only reason why we know these brands like um, Apple and uh, these brands like Nike and um, Adidas and whatever is because they're constantly shoving it in our face. Mm -hmm. And so we as artists have to do the same thing. Like no one, and especially like there's so much music out there. It's like flooded mm -hmm. with artists, different artists. So to be heard, you really got to like be in people's faces, which is which is marketing. Like, yeah. like it's mm -hmm. all marketing. Yeah, it's all marketing. Yeah, so um, once you're done, you know, hermiting in the studio and creating these beautiful songs, mm -hmm. I suggest to every artist to put on the business hat and then get going on your marketing mm -hmm. and really, really find a marketing strategy. And uh, yeah, and it's huge. It, yeah, and 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 us artists like are not naturally good at bit the business side mm -hmm. because we're artists, so they're kind of like contradicting um, the two things. So hire someone, just like hire someone, or even like there's like be resourceful mm -hmm. and ask your friends around you because a lot of people are trying to get into the music industry. Um, you know that that are probably doing a nine to five, but so they'll be down to help you. So right. Or yeah. well, they're looking to do that and, and don't have a, a, like a platform to do it on. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's what I, I've done for myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. Um, all right, well, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on socials and, and streaming and all that? Oh yeah, cool. Um, you can find me on all streaming platforms and I'm on social media as Taya Marquise, that's T-A-Y-A-M-A-R-Q-U-I-S. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, well, is there anything like you wanted to, to let people know about? Any upcoming shows or things you want to promote as well? I am definitely doing some shows this year. Um, I will announce the dates soon, so stay tuned for that. And uh, look up for the music videos that I'm going to be dropping, and yeah, that's that's what I'm up to. Cool. All right, well, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh my gosh, <laughs> thank you so much for having me and mm -hmm. allowing me to, uh, or creating a platform for us artists to speak and mm -hmm. educate other artists and whoever's watching yeah. um, or listening, and uh, yeah, this is dope. Thank you <laughs> for having yeah, this. Well. <laughs> it's great. Thanks for listening to this episode. I hope you got something useful out of it. If you did, please like, subscribe, comment, and share this series with your friends. If you like the artist and want to check out more of their work, please go to the show notes at vrtigomusic.com slash about to drop. Thanks again and stay tuned for the next episode.